Okay, so this is the third video on the modify commands. And uh, the first video we covered move, copy, uh, mirror, rotate, trim, extend, and erase. The second basic modify commands video, we talked about uh, fillets and chamfers, exploding, offsetting, scaling, and stretching. This video we're going to talk about arrays, and in particular, rectangular array and polar arrays. And so we're going to talk about the array command in particular uh, in this video because my other videos were running a little bit longer. So what I want to do here is I want to draw a line. Simply, oh, let's make sure it's not super huge. So let's say we're going to do a 6-inch line, and we want that line at exactly 45 degrees. So I just drew a 6-inch line at 45 degrees. If I come up here to the array command, I have a couple different options. Uh, so let's say, for example, the rectangular array. Notice the um, the shapes here, the four boxes, shows you what's going to be happening. It's going to take one box and it's going to put it in multiple spots uh, or multiple rows and multiple columns. The polar array here dealing with that takes it, it takes the item and makes multiple copies spinning it around in a circular uh, direction. So let's deal with rectangular array first. Let's say I want to click this rectangular array, which is the four boxes. It says, what do you want to array? And so I would just want to array that one box. So once I've selected everything I want to array, I want to hit enter or spacebar, and that allows me to be able to um, go on to the next step. So once I click on the spacebar here, it now defaults to four columns and three rows. So the columns are the vertical runs, the rows are the horizontal runs. And up here in this uh, array creation tab, I can now change how many columns and rows, the distance between them, and so forth. Uh, so I can, let's say I need 10 rows, sorry, 10 columns of these lines. So I could type in 10 and hit tab, and now it's going to create 10 columns. Let's say the distance between them I need at 4 inches instead of that default. So now it puts in a gap of 4 inches, and it gives me a total here. Uh, if I do a total of 40 inches, it now updates the distance between at 4.44, and it's updated it here on the screen. Uh, the rows is the same way. If you only want one run, then you would just simply put in one row, and that would give you one run here. Uh, arraying this one line 10 times at a space 10, 10 lines at a 40 inch total distance. Let me change this and let's put distance between at, uh, at 4 again. Notice it's not 10 times 4 gives you the gap, um, but it would, be, it would be 10 lines. So if you count them, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, there's 9 gaps. Uh, because one line is starting at the zero point and one line uh, at the very end. And so there's ten lines, but there's only nine gaps between the lines. That's why it gives you, um, at four inches apiece, nine times four is 36 for the, for the gaps. Let's say, we want, um, let's say we want five rows, but we want them really close. We only want them a half an inch apart. So I'm going to type in a half an inch. And so now it tightens them up where these lines are... For more or less, they're copied up exactly a half inch up on each one of the rows, and there's 10 columns running over. And I could type this into 50, let's say, and now we have 50 running up. I could type this down to um, 2, you know, and we can modify that as needed, okay? Uh, so that's the basics of the rectangular array, being able to quickly and easily change between them. Um, so I'm going to simply close the array, and so now um, the array is, is interlocked. And every time I click on that, it will go back to this Modify Array um, tab. If you want to disassociate these, where when you click on one, it doesn't select all of these lines altogether, you could easily go back. Well, let me go back to there. There is a Disassociate button somewhere. Um, I'm not seeing it for right now. I'll have to look at that later. Uh, but generally the way you uh, disassociate those is you use your explode command, select on one of the lines, and hit enter. And now every one of these lines, when you select on them, 
uh, will be a single individual. So that is the rectangular array. Now let me go in here to the polar array. So dealing with polar array, uh, it's going to place them about a circle. So if I select on this line and I'm going to hit enter after I select all my objects, it says where do you want the center point of your array? So if I want to make a, um, a circular pattern with these lines about this endpoint, it's going to spin all the lines around at this point. So I could click here and now it's put in these lines. So it defaults to 6. If I wanted, let's say, 20 lines, I could simply type in 20 and hit tab and now it updates. Now I have 20 lines exactly the 6 inches long um, and equal spacing between filling it up in 360 degrees. If I change the degrees to, let's say, 180 degrees, now it only goes halfway around. Um, and we can change change these settings. There's the associative. Uh, and I clicked on the associative to disassociate those. That's, that's what I had wanted it to do. So let me undo this and go back in. Go back to my polar array. I select my item and I hit space bar or enter. Once again, it says specify the center point or axis of rotation if you are in 3D mode. And so my base point is going to be, let's say this time I want it in the middle. And so now it spun those around uh, about the midpoint. Okay, so there's some different features here. Let's say that I had a circle and I clicked it out here. And I want, uh, let's say I want to make some sort of sunshine look where this goes all the way around my circle here. I could do a polar array selecting on this item, hitting enter specifying my center point as the center of that circle and now I could change that to let's say 60 lines. I'm going to put a bunch of lines in there and it can um, modify that or update that uh, in order to make more lines. If I'm well whenever I'm done let's say I want to close out okay now whenever I click on it it goes once again back into the array modify tab uh, but all of these are connected. If I clicked on, well, I guess it's only when you first create the model. Okay, so let me close that. If I want to simply separate those, I'm going to have to simply click on my explode and then it can do each one individually. Let me undo that. Let me show you what I was what I was shooting for here. I'm going to do a polar array about the center point with 60 uh, items. If while you are creating it, you click the associative, so it defaults to associative, meaning they're all interconnected, and it goes right into the uh, array creation tab, or the array modify tab. If you turn that off, when you click on closing the array, it makes each one of these individual. For some reason, I thought I could go into the uh, modify, array modify, and uh, it had that feature, but apparently it doesn't. It only has it when you're first creating it. If you don't disassociate those, you just simply explode them. Let me change it back to 60. So if I leave the associative on, that means they're all interconnected. That means whenever I get out of it and I click on it, I go back into the Array Modify tab, and I could change that around, let's say, to 30 instead of 60. And now it's 30 lines. Uh, here and uh, the, the polar array uh, allows me to modify those as needed but once you get that all set up you won't be able to disassociate it to my knowledge anyways without exploding it so I'm going to simply use my explode I'm going to explode this array and hit enter and now these are all individualized so that is the array command um, for the rectangular and the polar arrays